What's up guys, uh, I'm going to do the latest uh, One Piece chapter, just came out, uh, discussion and talk on that. So uh, I have it up here, so I'm pretty much going to do a sort of uh, scan of the pages so I remember what's going on. And I'm going to try and make this quick. Um, so first and foremost, uh, the first thing is the the... I forgot what they're called, I, I guess they're dwarves, but the dwarves that Usopp and Robin have run into. Now I really like this whole like play where uh, Usopp, with his very unique personality, I really do find him as a personality as very unique despite all the manga and anime I've seen. And that's, that's just something very cool. And there's different types of unique, but this is just, uh, I, I really like this playful sort of happy-go-lucky well not really happy-go-lucky but this sort of this sort of character who's like he's always telling lies but at the same time he's a good person so that's very very good for the creator I think his name's uh, Oda uh, props to you Oda for making such a character and that's something that a lot of manga series lack they just end up having generic characters because it's very hard to be so creative and so this whole thing with Usopp or Usopp land sort of making this this fib or lie uh, that's so big it, it's just very entertaining and at the same time it's it's very cute to see all these little dwarves in their little mini weapons and with uh, with their little mini like insects that they're riding and so from what we can see the dwarves are actually they're somewhat they're either part insect as well or they just have dwarves that are insects but basically you have here these uh, two types of vehicles which the dwarves are going to be sort of using in their army as transportation and you have these beetles uh, for the yellow kabu sort of subsection of the army and the pink bee beetle or the pink bee bee which is another subsection of the army and then it's very it's very cute and funny and awesome how that how the commanders of these subsections look like the insects and are in fact dwarf versions of these insects you have this guy named kabu who's a beetle pretty much and then um a girl named beyond who's like a bee but at the same time is a dwarf but at the same time is not a dwarf because she has multiple arms and so I think it's just it's a very awesome thing and I really like this whole gag ever like constantly ever since we first met Usopp hundreds of chapters ago um, it's just been this constant gag of him using his lies to sort of generate sort of strange situations and it's been a very long time since I've actually laughed out loud while reading a manga and I did when reading this one and I'll talk more about that when we get to the panel but it was generated by Usopp which I'm very I, I think it's it's pretty awesome and I guess like the the biggest memory I have of the whole Usopp gag was back in the the uh, vampire arc I wouldn't call it vampire arc but like vampire slash zombie arc where they they land on that island and basically Usopp he, he uses the 1,000 pound hammer on this enemy who's technically a lot stronger than him and he beats this enemy by lying and saying this is legitly a thousand pounds when it's te it was really just like a fake plastic toy and I just that that just cracked me up and I still remember it to this day uh, the girl she just started foaming through her mouth crazily like there's so much foam coming out because she had gone insane from the shock because she really thought this was a thousand pound hammer that was about to land on her head and so it's just this whole gag with Usopp I really like and here we see the him pretty much deceiving in a way this entire army army but at the same time like the classical Usopp 
it's a good vibe he's on the good guy side and he's not really he doesn't have bad intentions his lies are always to help like because of his lies he has sort of boosted the the uh, morale of the entire dwarf company and at the same time they were going to fight regardless of if Usopp showed up or not so by boosting the company alerting the dwarves about the entire straw hat crew and at the same time sort of uh, going along with the dwarves to fight it's just constantly awesome now I don't know if Usopp's just caught up in the luxury or not but I think he's grown not only in fighting capabilities but also in this in the style of that he actually is willing to go with this army to fight like there was very little sort of backlash from him when he found out he, I, I know at first he was a little bit shocked but I mean here he is with Robin riding on these these apparently transportation things or raccoons with the rest of the army to fight and I think it's just a very good thing uh, again I've mentioned this before but Usopp I really wanted him to be like maybe just surprisingly like the strongest person next to Luffy right after the time skip unfortunately that wasn't the case and as expected Zoro and Sanji were the ones who were close behind and then it's pretty much the same tier although everyone has gotten an upgrade but relative to each other they're all the same roughly the same level of strength give or take and obviously Usopp got a huge boost in sort of power level but at the same time it's just like he's still he's still kind of weak and he's constantly sort of scared and not trying to fight and sure we always don't want to lose that gag with him you know always scared and making lies to get out of it that's a very funny sort of gag scene going on but at the same time I want him to have that but be very 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 strong like super strong like Luffy level strong so it's kind of like he will do anything he can to escape but he, if he doesn't he's just super strong I think that'd just be awesome uh, but then that kind of reminds me of certain One Piece villains and they don't come across that great but if it's a good guy I feel like it could work it could work anyhow we see here like again the dwarves constantly throughout this this chapter I really liked it it's it's this sort of gag that they always have or they've had at least in the last hundred chapters with One Piece with just like innocent creatures who are asexual sort of doing things that they unintentionally uh, they don't know are actually sexual and then we see here the the king of the sort of the king of the dwarves residing or having been residing on uh, Robin's breast and it's just this constant gag that I, I, I really enjoy and it's it's a very fine fine line of doing it properly and I think it's been done well I believe the last time was very recent as well the last time was when um, I believe Chopper no long ago it was Chopper after the time skip it, it was simply like the, the whole thing with Chopper constantly asking for baths we're not asking for baths but constantly being offered baths to be taken with Robin and uh, Nami and then all the perverts all the perverts of the one uh, the straw hat crew saying I want a bath too and then them getting punched in the face and flying like into the sky and then the latest one before this was the same thing but with the samurai kid rather than chopper and so with this sort of uh, I mean I really like this page page 9 of the chapter um, they're riding off to battle and then you hear this sound I have to get something off my chest the first thing I thought of was this is originally in Japanese before translation is that saying actually a, like do they actually have that saying in Japan which I'm very curious about most likely they don't so like a lot of uh, like once you read enough manga like there's constantly these sayings which I don't really understand because there's no way in Japanese it would have been the same saying so I'm guessing like especially in Naruto I mean there's a lot in Naruto slight spoiler alert I mean Bison he uses a lot of rap phrases that have a lot of puns that are translated and the puns are still pretty decent 
So it's kind of like, how is that even possible? What I'm assuming is that the the real original uh, script is completely different, and then the translator just made up his own sort of dialogue for that that is similar. So yeah, uh, you hear this thing. I have to get something off my chest. Then it is the sort of king sitting there. Usopp's like, what the hell are you doing there? And then he just colloquially keeps talking about whatever it is. And so, uh, surpri not surprising at all for me, uh, he reveals that this sort of dilemma between the dwarves and the Don Quixote family has been going on for thousands of years, which likens to, again, I forgot his name, but uh, the, the initial settling of the man who found this place I forgot what it's called but um, the, the guy who the, who first the human who first met the dwarves a thousand years ago and then went back and then told like his whole town that he found these places and then he got executed because he couldn't find them anymore but yeah the point is he it seems to be like it the king says it started 900 years ago so that's roughly around the same time as that guy and so it's very interesting we don't have too many leads as of yet on where that story could go to but there you have it moving on from there like it, it all seems to be full circle and I think this is just a very very good sort of culmination like I really find it very unique how this always happens and obviously the creator can do whatever he wants and the thing is he it's just done so organically that it's not forced but we see here almost all the straw hats all seemingly to culminate into the dwarf army and sort of eventually th they all seem to be going to fight in this dwarf army I mean you have four straw hat members already there including Frankie and Zoro and it's all very curious because they all went on their own paths and now they all ended up here and so it seems everything's going right and uh, the, the author he just does a very good job of making it seem not like too artificial because you see Zoro I, I believe it was Zoro saying I can't be here I gotta go fight but then eventually being convinced to stay here and fight uh, which leads me to my next point my next point in the panel which is um, basically this whole again it's the gag again with Usab, which I very much liked and this is the thing that pretty much sort of uh, made me laugh but before I get to that I that brought up another thing um, again it's, it's just very interesting because you see all these people sort of running to this place running to this the the place where everyone seems to be headed you see uh, and then they all have come to a culmination and it, it's just really cool with everyone coming to this place uh, I believe it's called like the blooming sunflower garden and then I just thought it was pretty cool how they went down a secret passage to get there and Usopp is coming over and now finally let's let's go ahead and go to what I wanted to talk about which was what the first time I have actually laughed out loud in a while with simply the whole thing with Usopp so rough basically the dwarves are saying here that um, Usopp land our great savior has come to save the land and he's and he's come he's coming with all his allies including Luffy land Zoro land Nami land and then you see like Zoro saying looks like his lies have got a power up and then then this is the panel that, that very very much made me laugh which was uh, Frankie and Zoro just going out going along with the lie and for some reason it just seems to boost morale for the dwarves and it just seems to have a good effect because now everything makes sense to the dwarves and everyone's coming in to, to fight along with them and it all seems to be working very smooth and then the doors are all like shocked wow and yeah it's like uh, I'm probably Zoro Land and Frankie's like I'm Fran Land nice to meet you and it's just like Frankie's just he just I feel like he's gotten a, a very much different personalities since after the time skip 
before the time skip he truly had his own sort of personality his own sort of mo motivations passions and stuff in a, a unique a unique personality now after the time skip he's become more robotic more sort of a generic personality he's just like like uh, going along with things and he's kind of developed a completely new personality with the super thing and it's good in a way but at the same time it's i feel like i've lost part of his personality uh let me let, let me know in the comments what you think about that but yeah here he just frankie just seems to understand things uh so he just says yeah i'm franklin nice to meet you and yeah he just goes along with it and so he's he doesn't he's not like zoro where he's like mad at Usopp or anything he just constantly just goes along with it which I guess is his more new sort of robotic personality finally we have this thing with again Nami and the crew fighting this person first off I, I was very disappointed and I wanted to bring this up the thing is they're all very weak I mean they're all versing this one person and the next page you see uh, the, this girl this old lady say well you did manage to take out our ship which implies that all the all the crew that she came with were taken out and so it's just her this old lady versus Nami and the crew the crew comprising of the samurai boy um, chopper and who else Brooke but at the same time again I'm very disappointed at them after the time skip there's it's almost like they they don't have fighting capabilities nami is using this sort of weather thing but it's not really working that well it's very weak constantly brooke has this sword but his sword capabilities are always much behind um zoro's and it's just like a basic sort of fighting capability and then chopper is not doing much and i'm very much kind of disappointed in them like I really wanted something else after the time skip. I wanted all of them to be like tremendously power boosted. And yet here they are here they are having a very hard time struggling against this old lady from the Don Quixote family. I mean sure she's very, very strong, but at the same time I'm disappointed. And one can reason that they are disabled because all their weapons have been turned to toys. And so again they are doing decent work I mean they did destroy her ship and stuff so it is decent work and so now we get to the next part which is an interesting thing which I believe the author his name's Oda I believe he I believe he he is he made this up as he went he didn't have this plan he says from well he doesn't say but he makes the old woman say the old woman say um, that there is someone in the Don Quixote other than her who can turn humans into toys but she ate the art fruit which turns things into art and I personally believe like when she was first introduced it was very clear that she was turning humans and ships and objects into toy versions of themselves and so sure she was doing a little bit of dialogue saying these aren't toys this is art but I feel like the author sort of decided against it I guess he in this chapter decided to take a different route all of a sudden and say okay I don't want this girl to be the the sort of reason why everyone's been turning into toys I want to have another person behind her and I don't think that was necessary but there you have it moving on to the next part you see a law here and the law is pretty much he's stuck in a rut apparently he's he needs he still has Caesar he's defending Caesar or at least he has Caesar's heart and that is what he's using as a bargaining chip but he wants them to somehow bring the ship over so he can hand Caesar off and fight at his full capacity but regardless it seems like he is weaker than this, this Don Flamingo dude um, as of right now and he would be dead if not for the fact that he has Caesar's heart and 
again this might just be the fact that Caesar is I mean if they kill law you can't really just take back the heart because I'm sure the Caesar's heart is somewhere on law's body maybe in his pocket or somewhere but they can't just kill this guy so from the one the one panel we do see of this it seems like law or it's not just one panel but a few the few panels it seems that law is at a rut we don't know where the marine guy went the blind marine guy who's very strong and uses like asteroids to fight but we do see Don Flamingo I believe what's happened here is they have lost the Marines and Don Flamingo has beaten law in a fight now why is this possible I personally think law is just weaker than Don Flamingo I mean people can reason oh that's not true law has to protect Caesar well here's the thing Don Flamingo needs Caesar alive he's not going to attack Caesar to try and weaken laws laws like fighting capabilities and so on top of that it's like Caesar can protect himself sure he has he does have these no no even the the, the stone handcuffs the sea stones handcuffs they were taken off I believe or were they I can't remember no they still might be on him but the point is it's it's just, uh, yeah, I believe they were taken off. Yeah, so he Caesar can defend himself, and it just seems that Don Flamingo is weaker in fighting strength. No matter how you reason it, I mean, if he was, if Law was stronger, Law would have just beaten Don Flamingo and then fled. Instead, it seems here in this panel, Law is pretty much gasping on the ground, and so it seems like the only reason he's not dead is because of the the heart. He has of Caesar and I'm assuming he still has probably one last trick or one last trump card up his sleeve maybe he's waiting for Caesar to be handed off so he can use it effectively without any risk but it seems I would say Don Flamingo stronger which I'm not surprised at I mean just based off the few times he's fought in the entire manga it just seems like he's strong like his capabilities in the Bishu Kukai, or not Bishu Kukai, uh, excuse me, I, uh, I forgot the term. In the, uh, uh, well, I forgot what it was called, but the, the 10 people, uh, the, ten, the pirates who sort of renounced their name and became part of the, the uh, world government, uh, those people, he, he was definitely one of the strongest of them. And so it's, it's very interesting. I believe it's, it starts with a J. I, I can't believe I forgot what it's called. And so here we have Don Flamingo sort of revealing his plans on Luffy. And I'm kind of taken aback because uh, it seems like a much, much simpler plan than I thought at first. Simply it was to lure in Luffy, bait him out in the Colosseum, and then have the other people competing take him out. I don't think it's very great plan because obviously Luffy's much much stronger now Don Flamingo should know that maybe he's just I mean in this panel it seems like Flamingo thinks Luffy will die in the tournament uh, which is a stupid claim especially for someone as smart as him because Luffy is very very strong and we haven't seen him for years after the time skip so obviously Flamingo should assume that he grew much in power and so it's just I think it's stupid uh, sure, Luffy might be weakening, but I feel like he will come out on top, it just seems. And then, again, we go to the Zoro thing, where Zoro is saying, Go, Luffy, go! And then, like, you should have went this way instead of that way. So, um, my, my thing is, Zoro is probably up to par with Luffy. I know, based on just how Oda thinks, that there's, there's no way Luffy's going to be made to be weaker, or even on par with Zoro. As the captain, he has to be the strongest. But at the same time, I, I hate this hierarchy. I feel like all the Straw Hat Pirates should be at a very high power level. And one can reason, yeah, well, they're fighting against very hard people. That's why. But the thing is, I, I really want Zoro and Sanji and especially Chopper and Nami and Robin to step up. Because they just seem to be very weak compared to the others. And I don't like that hierarchy. 
And so finally, the final scene is just very simple. Um, Luffy pretty much revealing to everyone who has yet to realize that this guy is Luffy, now Lucy, or apparently people, the Japanese pronunciation is Luchi, but it's a very simple ending and she, he calls it Gomu Gomu Hawk Rifle, which is a new form of his attack, which I think is very cool. He sort of winds up his arms before attacking and then unleashes this blow uh, with uh, armament hockey and the thing is this might actually be the the greatest fight of the tournament I mean we're still in block C but these guys may in fact be the strongest people of the tournament and we might this is technically like a, a finals match I mean it happens a lot in real tournaments in real life uh, sometimes the two best people like the, the people who are predicted to win it end up fighting in the bracket much sooner than the finals and because of that it's like uh, the winner is it's it's not like the the biggest battle isn't the final battle and so th these two might be the strongest people Chin Zhao and Luffy and so I, I just I just have to say finally I really like this new sort of um, move by Luffy he winds up his arm spins it around and there's like uh, there's black it, it turns black because of the hockey and then he just lets it go very cool hawk rifle uh, very awesome and as for the chapter there will be no uh, rating I mean this one doesn't deserve a rating not because it was bad but because some chapters it's just subjective to give you a rating people will think it's too low and people will think it's too high and I don't think it deserves a perfect flawless rating but not if I put in anything below flawless um, it will seem like I'm discounting from the chapter so rather I will just give descriptive words to describe it good great solid chapter very awesome a lot of meat into this chapter best chapter ever no again parts of it were pretty much just sort of building up um, they were just intended to build up the scene for the next big event that would take place and so those things were kind of drawn out slightly tedious and obviously because of that these sort of scenes are never regarded as the, the sort of most amazing scenes in a manga and so obviously at least for the tournament one final thing that's needed to be noted is the fact that all the fights were more very colloquial fights especially in the one piece sort of vibe these were just sort of quick maybe two chapter or three chapter long fights happening in this sort of tournament that Luffy's taking part in and like we know from a fact from all the previous arcs that the, the these aren't intended to be taken seriously the big fights are going to happen and those are going to take like like 20 maybe 10 chapters to finish from start to end and that's just how one piece works the final boss fights usually are just luffy versus the final boss and those take up to 20 chapters all the way through so obviously this chin Zhao fight it seems to be starting and ending pretty soon obviously the author is saying that this isn't like that important and so i believe we, we are at the beginning to middle of this arc it seems to be all it's it seems to be to, to build up to the climax and we are soon to reach the climax in roughly two to three chapters once the dwarf army actually gets there by the way the dwarves are actually very very strong despite their cuteness and stuff i mean it was mentioned in the dialogue but they're so agile that they're almost invisible they are invisible to human eye so at that level of speed I really think that they have a good chance and it's, it's just very sad how 500 of them have somehow still been able to be captured and used potentially it seems to be foreshadowing the fact that this eluded princess this reference princess was the one who sort of sold out her own race to maybe benefit herself in some way and so I'm very interested to see what's going on with that 
and as always like favorite comment and subscribe leave a comment if you actually watched all 30 minutes of this uh, that'd be very appreciative apparently the click-through rates on these are like after a minute or so which is very bad so I mean the first minute is usually just me saying a hello and stuff so I think that's very bad but at the same time we're getting people liking up thumb thumbing up this video and leaving comments so I don't know how I feel about that but again it's very strange people leaving after a minute or so uh, when the video starts that's like the average time so leave a comment if you watch all 30 minutes that'd be very appreciative just 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 a little like thing where I can read it and say wow this guy actually watched all of it cool anyhow I'll see you guys later thanks for watching